Real fishing. sure you know what kind of cards you're holding, Mr. Machine. Cards, yeah. You must mean my Desert Storm collection set. I've got the whole thing. Been sitting on it for like 12 years. I've got like two Storm and Normans, three of those tank ones, a bunch of those crazy Scud missile cards. It's fucking awesome. No, no, a poker, it was a poker analogy. Anyways, it's the, the footage of the mysterious creature. Mysterious creature? You mean my footage of that shit? How the fuck do you know about that? Yeah, we know about the mysterious creature footage, thanks to a special informant. In fuck informant, huh? Fuck. Who's doing all the fucking informant? We're not really liberty to say. Well, dude, I'm not gonna answer any more questions until you tell me who that informant is. <sighs> it's an informant by the name Sharpie. Sharpie? That fucking piss pants step his own shit, greasy motherfucker. That's right, he does fuck his mother. Well, dude, this may come as some crazy news to you, but, uh, Sharpie's full of shit. Guy doesn't even fucking believe in Sasquatch. Uh, no, he's not. He specifically told me that you have the footage, and I've. I know that you have it. So you're from the FBI, right? Yeah. Working out of the States? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. If I was gonna turn over this tape to anybody, it would be the RC, 
fucking MP, bro. Oh, the RCMP, the biggest joke in the world. And I happen to know that they don't fucking give a shit about this kind of thing. So I guess you're just gonna have to hoop your own hand, buddy. Listen, man, I came, I drove from Washington. Do you know how far Washington is? <laughs> well, I don't fucking give a shit. Do, do I need to, do I need to call my superior on you? Yeah, buddy, let's get him on the horn. We can jam about how you're trying to jerk me around. Come on, please. Looks like you're gonna have to hold out for the episode, buddy, with my other uh, five fans, bro. I just thought maybe you could you could just show it to me at least. Well, buddy, what you should have done was shoot me a ringer before you even left. And I would have told you to f out before you even came here. Well, you 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 f out you you yeah, f f her f, f fuck. The quest for nasty mudfish has led me through sludge-filled meadows and the aroma of discarded chum buckets. It has paraded me through many hobos' toilets and it even caused me to slip on a piece of dog shit. Once. Friends that have joined me on this quest have suffered the mind-fraying anxiety of constantly wondering if the next fish on is actually going to be a discarded prophylactic, or worse. The mud quest is one that surely tears strips from a man's soul, and there are those who have dabbled too long in the mud fishery. They are often reduced to nocturnal, jittery beasts with minds entirely bound by rankness, and they tend to reek. Those who dabble in this game soon come to understand this risk, but rarely does one perceive when they have crossed that line. There are moments, though, trudging through the undeodorized armpits of the universe when one sees something truly disturbing. Welcome to Four Eel Fishing, Episode 5. I mean 4. At 7.45 a.m. June 25th, 2040, the Coke machine was dropped off at Endale Park in Mississauga, Ontario. The goal was to get his peepers on the Credit River scene before he was to meet up with the Pritchard Brothers for our serious fish down. Coke machine for real fishing. Here's the scoop. Here I am, Arendelle Park, Credit River style. Never been here before. Coke just sort of dropped me off. And um, I forgot a lot of my baits, but I brought a lot. So it should be cool. Let's see what's down here. It is um, June 25th, 2010. Check it over. As this was his first visit to the Credit River, the Coke machine aggressively scoped all of what he perceived as muddy holes. Coke machine for real fishing, here's the scoop. Here I am down at the Credit River. The scoop is I came across this big ass fence here. Thought I was gonna keep going south. Pretty sure people wouldn't put this kind of fence on a thing that was a park, so I assume this is a private property. So, I'm gonna go back up north, see what's going on up there. I got a lot of time on my hands. After wandering up and down this shed, the Coke machine set it on a primo spot, below the Dundas Bridge. Fish on! Coke machine, for real fishing, here's the scoop. Fish the river here, right at Dundas, and I just got myself a nice lively sucker on a worm. Hey buddy, we're gonna throw you back right now, bud, don't worry. Let us take a minute to jam about the mighty sucker. There are many species of sucker, but the most common one I've seen is the white sucker. It can be a variety of colors such as dark green, gray, brown, or black. In spring, during the mating season, you might find them with a thick, horizontal stripe. But always, you will find them with a very light underbelly. 
The bottom fins tend to be darker than the body. The most notable part of this beast is its suction cup-like mouth that it uses to suck shit off the bottom. Somehow it survives to grow to fairly large sizes. But what's in the shit it sucks off the bottom? God, do I have to tell you? I hope bugs and crustaceans, maybe a bit of scum here and there. But knowing this fish, I suspect they're sucking up something a little more diabolical. Just kidding. They probably just eat whatever happens to smack them in the face. They tend to like to hang out in similar muddy wallows as the mud cat, but often concentrate in the part of the muddy hole that is closest to the flow of the river. These fish can be a lot of fun to catch. I don't know if I'd eat one. You know, at this point in my life, I don't think I want to grow a tail. However, they can be solid fighters, and thus a very respectable, gross-looking, filthy mud. Fish. Coke machine, for real fishing, here's the scoop. When you're river fishing, you gotta have yourself some bite alarms if you wanna take it easy, you know what I'm saying? What we got here is this baby. This baby's gonna beep. And it bites. And then this, that's gonna ring if anything nibbles. You might be asking yourself, what kind of shit is a bite alarm? A bite alarm is a beeping device that is commonly used to detect bites in carp fishing, European style. Here we have a telescopic bank stick jammed into the mud for stability. Here's the reverberation chamber. This is where it all comes together when you're talking beeps. Perhaps you like to fuck with the volume, or possibly the tone. This is done with these knobs. On the top, there's some LED lights that allow you to locate your shit when night fishing. On this model, the lights change color when the device is firing off. Here's the line slot where you run your line. Inside, there are a couple of wheels that get spinning as your line pulls through. This activates the alarm. The bank rig is simple. Here we have the bite alarm. I was using a medium action rod. The reel bale is kept open to avoid the potential of having your whole rig pulled in the river when that hopeful General Sherman takes your bait. The rocker stick prevents your line from being pulled into the river by the current. It should be heavy enough to hold the line, but light enough to dislodge when a fish takes the bait. I sometimes like to fire a bell on the tip of my rod to detect more subtle worm assaults. This is how it's done, bank stick style. Shortly after noon, the Coke machine met up with the Pritchard brothers. Mike, also known as P. Rich, P. Zown, and Richard Pritchard. As well as his brother Steve, also known as Steve P. And STVP. Coke machine for real fishing. Here we are at the uh, Credit River, Mississauga style. Pulling out some mad suckers. Caught this guy on a worm. Here we had the method feeder working inefficiently, but slowly blowing off loads of oatmeal into the water, attracting this guy's attention. And he went in for the worm. Here we have a method feeder, shotgun style. The method feeder is a weighted device designed to slowly pinch off wads slash loaves of chump bait into the water to attract fish to the location of your masterly baited hook. All you need to do is jam this baby with a doughy bait. As it absorbs the water, the spring-loaded plunger slides more and more chum into the vicinity of your hook. As the chum dissolves in the current, the mudfish catch the scent and zero in on your bait. But wait, what in the high fuck can I use as chum? Chum, yeah, fire in a few of those soaked grains, or maybe soaked oatmeal. Or you could mix a little bit of the old cream corn with a little bit of the old flour. Hell, one time I even used my shoe to mash up a peanut butter and banana sandwich, and then I jammed it on in there. Didn't catch shit, but it smelled awesome. Remember, the more rancid your chum, the more randy the mudfish. Rig it. Coke machine for real fishing. Got my hands on this filthy dirt chub. As you can see, he's got crazy lips that he uses to steal my worm. Sometime over the last 10,000 years, in direct relation to the invention of the fishing hook, the mighty chub has evolved a set of lips specifically designed to suck worms off of hooks. Coke machine for real fishing. Another fucking chub. Check it out. Clean your fucking lens. Rivers are big, Coke. Where do I find the best place to catch those nasty mudfish? Well, here's a little trick I learned in the forest. Peep it down. You get to a section of river, you got some flow going on. If you want to find out 
if you got the right kind of dirty mud fish below. We're talking catfish, carp, suckers, and the lowly chub. What you gotta do is get a handful of cheese logs and huck them into the river. Basically, the score is if you can get if your cheese logs are gonna move in the direction opposite to the flow of the river, then you know that section of river is where those dirty mud fish are gonna be. Allow me to clarify. Get ready for the cheese log river flow test. In this case, the river is flowing in a hard westerly direction. This test can be performed with a variety of puffed up snack treats. Be it the standard orange cheese, Swiss, Parmesan, or zesty Mexican. Hell, for those thrifty fishermen, you can even use a fucking potato chip. Spud style. Toss this ultra delectable snack as far out into the test waters as possible. You may desire a set of binoculars so you can peep the subtle movements that the unseen currents exert on your test snack. You will quickly realize that the movements of the cheese log exhibit an abundance of information that is invaluable to the seasoned mud fisherman. If the cheese log travels in a path that is opposite of the main flow of the river, then this means that the waters below can be considered slack water. And we know those mud fish are always looking to slack hard. This is the area where the mud fish get up to the bulk of their nastiness. You don't even want to know what that entails. All right, I'll tell ya. The nasty activities of the mud fish include the following. Number one, fiendishly consuming random blobs of miscellaneous fecal matter, be it human, unknown. Number two, random acts of cannibalism. Number three, alternating between acts known as hot cars and Boston steamrollers. Number four, Introducing P. Rich. Proud moment in uh, P. Rich history here. It's like I got uh, my new lucky fishing hat on and I caught a prize. <laughs> chub. About a six inch chub. And yeah. I've got about a six inch chub right now too. After growing disillusioned with the Credit River chub scene, the cook machine and crew wrap it up for the night. None of them would ever expect what would cross their path on the next outing. On a quest for more profitable mud grounds, the lads made use of the interweb to find a fishing spot by utilizing photographs from space. space. After locating several fishermen's trails that might lead down to the river, the Coke machine and crew set out to their first destination. Carriageway Park, Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. What they saw there, we changed the entire nature of existence for the Coke machine and crew from that day on. After gathering sufficient footage of a mysterious creature, the Coke machine and crew abandoned the encountering grounds in search of their original quarry, the mudfish. Flash forward, then flash down, and then flash just a little bit to the left, and flash forward again, and here we are. After nearly breaking their asses sliding down a steep hill, the cook machine and crew found themselves fishing below a bridge like the common troll. We went down a crazy cliff, base essentially, and everybody got muddy, but here we are with the primo spot. Perfect place to take it easy. Peerich has been pulling in a few small fish on uh, corn. We had the leeches out earlier, and we're just waiting for the big carp to come cruising in. The mud cats are coming in. Coke machine for real fishing. I threw bits of uh, some kind of a fish on my hook. And this is what I caught. Check it out. This guy really inhaled my shit. Brown bullhead or some kind of bullhead. Dig it. There you go. The catfish is truly the bearded hobo of the deep. Although I prefer to think of him as the unemployed wizard of the wallows. You will find this beast the happiest under the cover of darkness where it uses its whiskers to sense food items that are living, dead, or just anything that smells foul. As the sun sets, the mud cats rise from the muck to root around in the shallows. On its dorsal, as well as pectoral fins, you will find some nasty spikes that tend to be ridiculously sharp. However, if you use a bit of stealth, you can hold this fish by grabbing it underneath those spines as they are rather stiff. 
Stiff as steel. Rest assured, if this fish spikes you, he'll probably get you pretty good. One time the Coke machine was spiked in the back of the hand by a dead catfish. I forget exactly how that happened. Although he barely felt it, his hand was gushing blood for a good 15 minutes. Catfish won, Coke machine won. You might be surprised to know that mud cats as well as other species of catfish have taste buds all over their bodies. Even on the jennies. They can actually taste your bait with the tip of their tails. Holy shit, who knew it? This fish tends to spend its days mudding it up in tight spaces. Spaces such as hollow logs, discarded cans slash boots, muddy holes, and their all-time favorite, hollowed out turd skins. Fuck. Sure, you can catch a few of these babies during the day, but if you really want to play the catfish game, get out there just as the sun starts going down and the mosquitoes start a-biting. Minnows that have wigged out in your minnow bucket make perfect bait for both channel and bullhead catfish, as do worms, fish bits, dough balls, corn, cheese, and basically anything edible or rank. You can have a lot of fun trying out what ridiculous baits you can catch them on. Plus, it makes a great story when you can say things like, I got 25 catfish on a fucking grape, dude. Here's a rig that works totally awesome for catching catfish at night. I like to call it the Catfish Ultra Rig, featuring Bobber with a Brain. If you saw me walking around with this rig, you'd probably think I was a real asshole. But let me tell you, this rig is pulling three games at once, making it one of the most effective mudfish night rigs that has ever been conceived. The Baba with a brain automatically sets itself to the depth you are fishing, providing ultra dope strike detection while your bait sits directly on the bottom, right where the muds are. I like to use a 15 pound main line with a circle hook dropper set 18 inches up from the swivel. Tip that baby with a half crawl, one eighth crawl, or even the classic ring o crawler for that ultra stealth approach. For the sinker in this rig, I actually have a shotgun feeder. Why do you ask? Cause shit, if you can have a sinker that blasts out chum, you might as well rock it. I like to jam that baby with oatmeal and cat cheese. If the bottom is weedy, you're gonna wanna fire on a line float to keep your bait from getting all shitted up with weeds. On the end here, I actually have a full crawler on a treble hook. Mud cats love inhaling your bait. A treble hook or large circle hook will prevent you from fucking them up. Rig it. Driven nearly to the edge by fishlessness, Steve R.P. contrived a rig that strode along the thin line between sanity and the great abyss. Introducing Steve R.P. Steve Pritchard for real fishing. Got a double jig, quadruple weighted rig here. Uh, I'm sick of using the leeches and the corn, so I'm using the, the rubbers. Got a one scented bait here with a mustache. I'm rubbing the peanut butter all over it to get, <laughs> give it a bit of a smell, you know, a bit of a taste. See what we can catch out there. Let's take a moment to take a look at the Steve Up Peanut Butter Bottom Rig. Thousand pound main line. Double stack sinkers, walking style. One quarter ounce jig head. Another one quarter ounce jig head. Grub with a mustache. I don't even know where you find these. Don't rig it. Due to a mysterious electrical disturbance that was generated between the lead sinkers, Steve RP's rig suffered a massive rig explosion that resulted in Steve nearly losing his right hand and his left knot. Just kidding, but he did catch shit all. Suddenly, a greasy storm set in. Hey Rich, for real fishing, fishing for whistles. He's got, he's got a catfish. A whiskerless catfish. A straight up corn fed rig. Just a uh, bunch of corn on a circle hook. The sinker's tied up about six inches up. Nice. The storm pissed all over the place, turning the river into a savage beast, spewing forth all sorts of nasty shit from its muddy underbelly. Nasty shit like this. Be rich here for, uh, for real fishing, and we have one of the dangers of city fishing. Finding uh, discarded domes and other sexual apparatuses in the river. The storm continued to piss hard and fast. Luckily, before it started to shit, the coke machine and crew got the fuck out. 
Whoa, what was Pirate Rock in there? Some kind of crazy rig? Here we have the Serbian Double Rig. This is possibly the most devastating mudfish rig ever conceived by a human being. It is both lethal and savage in its simplicity. What makes this rig so goddamn effective? Who am I, Poseidon? The answer is not to be known by the common mortal. Just rig it and know its power. All you need to pull off this rig is five simple elements. Toss a whack of 20 pound braid on your reel as your main line. Slide a one half ounce sinker on that before the swivel. If you want to fancy it up, fire a bead on there. You can also sub in a shotgun feeder in place of the sinker. If you can, rock a 6 to 12 inch fluorocarbon leader, 10 to 15 pound style. Your first hook is at number 6 of the Circle Persuasion. A juicy worm is a primo choice for this rig. Or another option is to rig a worm on one hook and a piece of corn on the other. Cap that off with a number 12 micro hook. You might be asking yourself, why have a number 12 micro hook? So I'll tell ya, this silly son of a bitch right here. The round Kobe is the dirtiest shitbag of them all. Filthier even than the fucking chub. They were brought into the Great Lakes in the ballast of some asswipe ship. Boy, was he wiping ass. Now they're all over your mom's house. Just kidding. The larger part of the Great Lakes is really just Gobies holding hands. They love gathering in circles around the perimeter of game fish nests, and especially you worms, slowly picking off micro chunks until your bait is all but a skeleton, and you sit is all but a silly fool. The micro hook is the only weapon the common man has against the round goby. At least with this, you can catch one. Ontario law states that you must stomp a goby before returning it to the water, as releasing it alive is illegal. The gobies have come into the Great Lakes in such numbers that they are destroying ecosystems and causing havoc with all the native species. One good note is that many species of fish have turned on to the goby horde. The gobies face serious predation from bass, walleye, pike, trout, and even whitefish. Due to the goby's massive numbers, combined with the fact that its brain is basically a pinhead-sized blob of mud, many sport fish have grown huge eating these goofy mud dwellers. So if you find a plastic bait that looks like a goby, give it a try and you may be surprised at the results. But don't rig a live one, cause that's illegal. Rig it. So coke machine, I heard that carp as an invasive species have really soiled the pristine trousers of North American waters. Is this true? Ha! That's a strange way to put it. Let me spin you a little yarn about the carp in North America. The carp wasn't always considered a swimming blob of rancid garbage. There was a time when this fish was only consumed by richos and nobility. That is part of the reason it was brought to North America in the first place. It tends to be a rather tough beast that is able to live in all kinds of wild circumstances. Thus, in the days when lakes and rivers were treated by humans as a toilet, a garbage dump, and a laundry facility, the carp got the upper hand and was able to wig in when other species were wigging out. Now they inhabit just about every single puddle from the Great Lakes on down, and up a little. Carp can grow to giant proportions. You can often see schools of monster carp cruising the shallows and resting in the sunshine. They can also be a real pain in the ass to catch because carp can often be rather intelligent. There are many people in Europe and a growing number in North America that are dedicated carp fishermen. These people have carp fishing down to a science. The coke machine, however, usually catches carp when fishing for other species and catches shit all when he's trying to fish for carp. These fish can be caught at a number of amazing baits. Common baits are dough balls, boilies, worms, Corn, gummy bears, spinkleberries, dog food, cigarette butts, chewed up bubblegum. I even saw a video of a dude catching one on a strawberry, so feel free to experiment. If you manage to get one of these giants on the line, then you are in for a fierce battle. The carp is not particularly fast, but shit, they are full of juice, so be ready. I think it's time to drop that flashback. Welcome to The Encounter in Grounds. Carriageway Park, Mississauga, Ontario. 3.45 p.m. July 4th, 2010. Featuring The Coke Machine, b Rich, and Steve P. As you can see, this is a high definition image captured by a high class instrument floating in space. Let's check this shit. Here we have some houses, a crazy creek, 
a bushy forest, a parking lot for automobiles, a big old fat slice of river, and a grassy pad for taking it easy. The Coke machine and crew sent onto the park like a pack of randy spiders. Suddenly, the Coke machine got his peepers on what could be described as a hobo highway that led through the forest. Traveling at break ass speed, the crew was stopped suddenly by a medium class chain link fence. Their hands clenched on the wire. The lads gazed upon the beautiful stretch of river, trapped on the other side. With words that were few, yet profoundly poetic, P. Rich transcended space and time, collecting the sentiments of fishermen throughout the centuries and the world over into one reverberating statement. He said, some Dirty asshole put a golf course beside the river. The Coke machine said, shit. While heading back up the trail, Steve P fell behind and yelled out, shit dudes, my rod is gotten some kind of shit. Coke Machine and Pirates turned to find Steve P in some kind of strange wrestling match with a small shrub. On seeing that the shrub was winning, the Coke Machine asked, Do you want some help, bud? To which Steve asserted, This is really a one-man job, Coke. He then upped the ante, aggressively jostling at his fishing rod, causing the bush to thrash to and fro violently. Meanwhile, the Coke Machine found himself a rock that was shaped like a reclining chair. Peerich occupied his time by admiring the stealth and beauty of a pair of magnificent red squirrels as they laid down some low and dirty dong and high in the forest canopy. Steve let out a bear-like grunt, once again calling the attention of the crew to his struggles. When the lads looked back, the game had mysteriously changed. Steve howled, fucking rock, what a shithead. Steaver, engrossed in his effort, was caught unawares as his rod broke free from the rock and smoked him right in the face. It even squished him a little, in the eyeball region. It was at that moment that Steve P let out an ear-destroying banshee scream. Somewhere in the deep woods, something was disturbed from its dark lair. As they exited the forest, the Coke Machine spotted another trail and said, Yo, boys, we better peep it down. As they exited the woods, that's when things got really fucked up. Steve P was all like, what the, who, uh, what the F is, what? Hey, Coke Machine, scope that out. Coke Machine, for real fishing, here we are in Millville Park, and what comes out? Some kind of crazy space dog. <laughs> Chupacabra. Let's see, he's got leather pants on. He's all fragile, Yeah. Probably getting sunburned because he has no fur. That's weird, guys. Mudfish breakdown! Coke machine for real fishing. Here I am at the uh, Conestoga River where it goes through St. Jacobs. I'm gonna see if I can pull in some mud cats. I saw a couple of Mennonites fishing. Didn't see them catch anything except some bass. So we'll see if we can catch some catfish though. Check it out. for real fishing. Mud cats are everywhere and I love them. Ultra dirty mud cat. Filthy as hell. Let's try to catch some bigger ones. Check it. When the fuck does a carp hit a spoon? Machine for real fishing. You never know what you're gonna catch when you're salmon fishing. Good night.
They don't tell you that about about these catfish that they bark. Should be a dogfish. Coke machine for real fishing. I hope my uh, shirt is not tucked in my underwear. This is the first channel cat I've caught in the wild, but I'm gonna let him go. But you can tell by the fork in his tail that he's a, he's not a mud cat. The channel. Coke machine for real fishing. You wouldn't believe the crazy rig I was throwing out there. I'll describe it to you in animation format. But check this nice cat fish I caught. Coke machine for real fishing. Here comes fucking catfish number two. Crazy puffed up. And you went for the fucking worm again. Oh, he's a channel, yeah. Huh. I swear that's the same fucking fish. But look at his crazy spine. That fish is deformed, man. Do you see how crazy looking he is? Yeah, huh? He's got like a hump on his back. DDT, folks. That is pretty crazy. He must live uh, underneath the power lines, buddy. But Coke Machine, what about the chubs? Chubs? Fuck chubs. All right, what can I tell you about chubs? Uh, let's see. Their skeleton is pretty much just sludge that has congealed, and uh, that is surrounded by their body, which is pretty much a gelatin-like substance, but uh, less fancy. Done. Special thanks to lads at FishingFury.com Catch the Coke Machine and other totally awesome folks as they chat about fishing and other fishing related shit at FishingFury.com Visual confirmation, and the bee has the honey, and the honey is sweet. Motherfucker. I bet you didn't know that the Coke Machine writes all the music for Foreo Fishing. How would you like to get yourself all cranked up before your next fishing adventure by cracking the For Real Fishing theme song? Well now you can! Do yourself and the Coke Machine a favor and click on the link below to purchase that ultra dope track and other super sultry own beat factory tones! All proceeds go towards future For Real Fishing episodes, oh yeah! The carp has an arousing set of facial features. This in combination with a sensuous and curvaceous body is sure to leave you hot and bothered on the bank. Wait, these fish are gross. If you find this species sexually arousing, then you need to see the doctor. Tell him Coke Machine sent you. Shit, just kidding. <laughs>